Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? HTG Brian back with some more Funko Fusion. Next up, Masters of the Universe Level 3 Story Snake Mountain Outing. That's right, no trophy achievements found in this, but what is that? A KFC bucket? Brian, this is story. We're not supposed to be getting collectibles. That is accurate. However, this game makes you get one. So the comfort in this is that everybody should walk away from this level with that KFC bucket. But I wanted to point that out now and talk about it early just because we generally try and avoid all the collectibles in this. However, it is simply an unlock to get Colonel Sanders. And even though it's not seemingly attached to the 100%, we're going to go ahead and get those later as well. So quick look at the collectibles, still showing zero, but we're going to jump right in though. All right, so there are a few things to be aware of here. There are three bosses you got to take on. It's recommended you go to the far right and take on old Triclops first because just because of the level and how it works out. You don't want to go left to right and then get the key and then have to run all the way back left. So we're going to start on the far right, work our way left. However, there has been a few issues that I ran into. In fact, I had to play this level four or five times due to tragic glitches or... I guess fail to load situations like for example one of the bosses hops on these rocks later they're supposed to turn gold so he-man can break them down but it did not work that same boss actually missed one of his rocks and fell below the map there's a few things so before i get too far behind let's go ahead and take out the baddies on the first island here and target those golden eyes that's right we got to get those eyes gone from purple to golder now look at this i was not expecting to get shocked right there by that robot not very happy uh, I wish I knew that robot's name. He kind of reminds me of Bender from Futurama, but it's clearly a different version. Bender robot. Uh, anyways, up the hill we go. We actually run into the red orb baddie. Now, I had him spawn in that lower island and up top in my multiple attempts at taking down this level. Simply progress to the top. Get it if you want. We're going to save that for later. But up top, we've got Big Batty here. We're going to shoot him and fill that meter so he drops down and does a ground pound. And then it's up to us to just go ahead and take him through the three colors of the text. So we got to go from white to orange to red. And then, of course, he'll go up top, spawn some more baddies, and we rinse and repeat that. So I definitely recommend taking out the bad guys down low before activating him and making him drop it like it's hot again. But that's up to you how you want to proceed. So fill up that yellow meter again. He'll drop down. A couple more baddies will spawn. Basically, if you have a full clip with He-Man, it sh or sorry, Adam. If you have a full clip with Adam, we'll go ahead and uh, raise the roof and chase him off. Now, I'm getting hurt pretty bad, so I want to point out that there is a full heart in the left corner of this area here. Feel free to swoop it up. Otherwise, you might die. All right, last time he drops down, pew, 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 going from white to orange to red, indicating that we're almost done. It's kind of the version of the health meter this game provides. He'll do another ground pound if you don't get it in time. And look at that. Booyah Kashao. One done. All right, so next up, we're going to want to go ahead and double back down the hill that we came up, back through that cave. And this time, we're going to go a different route. It's actually only other route available. However, it does lead to two other bosses up here. So we're going to run all the way back and mold a portal. It's going to be sweet. We're actually going to basically cheese this. There's supposed to be three steps here, but we're going to do it in two. So we'll go ahead and throw the portal down over on the left side. I think I wasn't able to throw that down due to the expiring flames or lavas that come from up top. And we're going to go ahead and place the portal activated on that lower left side. There should be a purple crystal that needs to be shot. Now, the thought is you're supposed to go and activate that other portal, get up there, and then shoot this crystal down low right. But why would you do that when you can get it from the first one? So we go ahead and activate a new portal that's available, thanks to us charging up that crystal. And up the hill we go! This part right here is a little hectic. A lot of guys come out of nowhere, seemingly from your right or backside. There you go. There's a couple of them dropping from the mountain. If you proceeded further, it would have seemed like they came from behind, and it still may appear that way. Take these guys out, and then what we want to do is advance across this bridge here, which is going to trigger a cutscene and our next boss. Uh-oh, it's Trapjaw. Now, this guy's pretty much invincible while standing over there. He depletes the bridge, so we've got no access across. So let's go ahead and mold a portal that we can actually sneak right on behind him, which will chase him off and also allow us access to another purple crystal that we can shoot and turn gold. 
There we go. We'll go ahead and activate that portal over there. Slip on through to the other side. And there we go. We've got our purple crystal. Complete our Demeter. Go right back on through. And that should give us access to another portal across the bridge there. So activate that. Slip on. And look at that. Booyakashow. We've got ourselves the He-Man transformation pad. I have the power. All right. Now there are three or more rocks here that he's going to jump on. It's going to be up to us to go ahead and give him cha-cha-cha-cha-cha. All right, one rock down. As soon as you knock him down, you're going to want to melee or shoot him as much as possible. The problem with this is, is that uh, immediately, as soon as he gets knocked down, more bad guys spawn. Now, because you are He-Man, keep in mind that your melee attacks are doing 500 damage, making most of these guys one-taps. So go ahead and take them all down, make your way to the next golden rock, and shall rinse and repeat. I try to get in between, or put him in between me and the bad guys, but it doesn't always work out that way. You can see I pinned him in the corner here, so I couldn't. I mean, I was hoping maybe the, the enemy fire would shoot him and actually do damage to him. Kind of like you could chase him into fire and they'll burn up. Didn't seem to be the case, though. All right, we got one more rock to knock. We'll go ahead and spam, 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 spam. All right, he's down for the count. We just got to finish him off. You'll know when it's completed when that check mark pops up there over his icon in the top right corner. You can see here I'm trying to use the bad guy's enemy fire on him, but it didn't seem to work out. Although we do get our check mark, so we're free and clear to move on. So we're going to take out these bad guys and make our way up the hill towards Evil Lynn, which she is the one that actually does a giant ground pound upon defeating her. And it takes out the KFC bucket nearby. So this is the first time we've run into this. And, you know, if we can make it through all of the story with only getting this one collectible, that would be a success because we had not played the whole game and we had no idea how this was all going to work out. So as we make our way through the cave, Evil Lynn will drop down from the ceiling. And, of course, we need to get close to her to spawn her shield, which she'll fly up. But see, here you go. There's that KFC bucket locked in a cage over on the back left side of her spawning area. Once she floats up above you in this purple, I guess, shielded, uh, I don't know what it is, go ahead and shoot her till she drops. She is invincible still, but she's going to spawn a bunch of clones. We take all those clones out. That should actually give us access to the real evil win. And, you know, you can see here, I'm actually even working my way over to this front side, hoping that after the third round of this, that maybe, just maybe, she might not ground pound the crap out of that KFC bucket. But it turns out, I even had her sort of uh, at a funny angle. She did a ground pound, and the way it went wasn't like out and across the ground. It actually went sort of diagonally up in the air and down into the ground and so it like missed the kfc bucket but unfortunately it still took it out so i tried this three or four times and every single time i was uh, unfortunately rewarded with the kfc bucket so uh, i'm guessing that everybody's gonna get that now if somehow you make it through here and it doesn't happen drop me a comment and let me know but keep in mind too that when we return in the fun play we will show you guys exactly where that fun bucket is too so if you somehow miss it now, we'll make sure you get it later, too. All right, you can see I sort of retreated into the cave and uh, tried to use this as cover fire. And from her original purple shots from when she's shielded, it does work. But when she spawns her clones, they chase us across the gap here and try to take us down. So we're going to use this corner one more time just to kind of avoid the blue. Uh, I, I called the purple a second ago, but the blue orbs that she shoots at us. And one more time, we'll drop her down, and once she hits the ground, she'll spawn her clones. We got one more round of raddying the baddies, and that should be it. It'll be ground pound central here in moments. Now, I noticed that you don't do the same amount of damage to her as you do the regular baddies. I mentioned that you do 500 melee damage, and that's not the case for these guys. I'm not sure why. Look, I think this might even be one of the times where her ground pound doesn't go out and perfectly across the ground like it should but we'll see we'll see i got her way in this corner over here pinned and booyakasha see it went out and up like that was so weird but it's still blasted through even though the cage is still there the kfc bucket is gone so i don't know hopefully it all works out later and i'm sure it will it's just weird especially since at the end total screen it doesn't even track those kfc buckets that must be a weird late addition oh Ah. 
what, what was Orko doing? He just straight looted that chest. He's like, nothing to see here, people. Mine. <laughs> All right, so uh, in the next room we go. Uh, go ahead and swoop up the crown. It should take us to the final total screen, which we already mentioned does not track the KFC buckets. I asked Doug about this, and he said that there was a spot, so we'll have to check that out later. So it's just weird that it doesn't track it here as it's part of a level. Each level has one, so why isn't it on this final thing here? It must have been a late addition. All right, the level is done did. Let's go ahead and return to our poolside view here. And of course, level four is now open for us. So we'll be jumping into that next. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you found it useful or maybe a wee bit entertaining, click that like button. You'd be surprised how much that actually helps us. Of course, a share or a comment down below would be greatly appreciated too. As for me, that's gonna do it for now, guys. As always, until next time.